Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking you through my detangling routine. So I typically always finger detangle my hair and I'm going to talk you through why and how I do that in today's video. So let's go ahead. So before I say anything else, I just want to mention that curly hair is prone to getting knots and tangles. It's just within the nature of curly hair. Because the curls all intertwine, they just get knotted and tangled within each other, especially if your hair is long and especially if your hair is dry. If you have long, fine hair like mine, you may find that you experience particularly knotty hair and I'm going to show you how I detangle mine in today's video. I'll talk about how I prevent my hair from getting knotty in between wash days in another video but for today I just want to focus on my detangling routine. So first up let's talk about why I finger detangle. So I pretty much always finger detangle my hair and I get asked quite a lot whether I use a brush or a comb and the answer is not really. Very occasionally if my hair is particularly knotty or if I'm in a rush and I can't be bothered to detangle my hair, I will sometimes use a brush or a comb. My preference would be a, like a sort of tangle teaser brush. But yeah, I pretty much always use my fingers and that is for a few reasons. So the first reason is because I have a fine, loose curl pattern. So this means that if I over manipulate it or I brush it too much with a brush or a comb, that it can disturb my curl pattern and make them fall differently. They may lose lose their curl structure and they may fall a bit looser and I personally just much prefer the results that I get when I finger detangle. The second reason that I choose to finger detangle is because I find that it's much more gentle on the hair. When you use a brush you kind of don't stop when you get to the knots it kind of just keeps brushing and that can cause I find breakage so when you finger detangle you stop when you get to the knots and then you can kind of very gently prise the knots apart without causing any excess breakage and I just find that that works best for me. Now let's talk about when I detangle. So I always detangle my hair when it is soaking wet in the shower after cleansing and with lots of conditioner slathered on my hair. This is what gives me the best results and it's the easiest way that I have found personally to detangle my long tangly hair. Obviously the hair is most fragile when it is wet but I find that having lots of conditioner in it helps protect it and also it really just makes the detangling process easier when you've got lots of conditioner and water in your hair so it will help you sort of break up the curls and really just, yeah, it makes the process a lot easier. Having a conditioner with really good slip is gonna completely change your detangling game. If you've got a conditioner that doesn't glide through the hair that well, then it's gonna make the process a lot harder. So before I show you my detangling process, I wanna show you my day five hair. It has been refreshed once, I think, and it may look okay on the surface, but believe me, there's plenty of knots in here plenty of knots. So let's just take a little look. So if I just put my hair at the root, you see that it stops here? That's knots. So I pretty much have knots from the root all the way down. And it's just because my hair intertwines and especially when you refresh your hair you may find that you get more tangles. I don't particularly detangle my hair on a refresh day. I just wet it and diffuse it and that is it. I deal with the knots once a week on wash day because that is just about all I can handle because I'm a lazy curly girl if you haven't already noticed. So now that you know all about why I finger detangle and when I finger detangle, I'm gonna show you my finger detangling process. I cannot say finger detangling anymore, it's driving me crazy. Let's jump into the shower. After cleansing my scalp, I split my hair into two sections. Water is key with detangling, so I don't remove any excess water after rinsing out my cleanser. I then add a generous amount of conditioner to the palm of my hand and apply to the lengths and ends of my hair. I start by smoothing the conditioner over my hair to work it in and marry the water and conditioner together. Once I've done this, I have a better idea of whether or not I need more conditioner or water. Today I decided I needed more conditioner. I apply the conditioner in the same way as before and gently begin to rake my fingers through my hair in repetitive motion to loosen any tangles. The right side of my hair always tends to detangle more easily for some reason, so I usually detangle this side first. I continue until I'm able to run my fingers through my hair with ease. That looks good to me. 
The left side of my hair tends to have more tangles so needs a little more care. To really get the conditioner into the cuticles of my hair and help with detangling, I'm gently scrunching smaller sections in pulsing motions, making sure not to squeeze the water and conditioner out. This is also known as squish to condish. For this detangling method to work, your hair needs to be soaking wet, so I'm adding a little more water. If your hair isn't wet enough, it will be harder to detangle. I'm now gently raking my hands through the lengths of my hair again, stopping each time I get to a knot and gently prise them apart with my fingers. The reason the knots separate with little force is because I took the time to marry the water and conditioner together. If I'm ever struggling to detangle, I usually add more water before I add more conditioner. Water is a very important part of this process. I continue this method until all the knots have been separated throughout my hair. I'll then squish the water and conditioner into the ends of my hair. The ends are the driest part of my hair, so this really helps to hydrate them. I continue raking my hands through my hair until I no longer come up against any knots. I then flip my head forward and rake through to ensure there aren't any knots underneath that I missed. I'll usually add a bit more water at this stage too. As I rake through my hair you can see clumps begin to form and my hair has a seaweed like texture. This is what you're looking to achieve when conditioning and detangling your hair. I then do the squish to condish method again to really hydrate those cuticles. Next, I tie my hair in a bun on top of my head while I shower. Because my hair is already pretty moisturised, I only leave it up for about a minute or so. But if you have dry hair, you can leave it for longer. I'm now rinsing the conditioner out of my hair, raking as I do so to free up any sneaky tangles that may have formed. Now that I've rinsed the conditioner out, you can see my hair is completely tangle free. I'll then go ahead and add my stylers, but I won't bore you with that in this video. So there you go. That was my entire detangling routine. Let me give you a little curl tour so you can see the lengths of my hair Ooh, just keeps going I'll show you the back as well Here's the sides so very soft light you know barely any tangles I say almost tangle free because I mean I feel like my hair always has some kind of tangles in it. It's just it's just the way it is. I probably could run my fingers through it quite easily today, but I don't want to do that because that would ruin my curl definition. I really hope you found this video helpful and that you found some tips on how to finger detangle your hair. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I will see you soon. Bye, guys.